In 2010, I read a book that changed my career and definitely changed my life forever. The 20th anniversary of that book, the 20th anniversary edition of that book um, has just come out. I want to talk about it. And more importantly, I want to talk with Michael Batnick about why it's so important to come across the right books at the right time in your career. Stick around. I think this will be really interesting. All right, so Mike, let me get into this real, real quick. Uh, Nick Murray, who I guess the best way to describe him is he is an advocate for financial advisors and writes investment books geared toward professionals who have to explain um, investing. He's like an advisor to the advisors. Like, yeah, that's right. He's like the advisor's advisor. Okay, so I'm an acolyte of, of Nick Murray's. I'm a huge fan. And this book, I don't know, do I, do I have this in the front? You do. I, I got it. Okay. So simple wealth, inevitable wealth. You can't buy it on Amazon. You have to buy it on nickmurray.com. A lot of advisors buy boxes of them and give them to their colleagues or to clients. Um, he's written a bunch of books. This is my favorite. And after I read it, I put it down. I remember saying, okay, now I get it. I understand what my purpose is. I understand the most important things about investing that no one had ever taught me before. And I was thinking about this week. Um, Nick sent me an autographed copy of, of the 20th anniversary edition. I was really excited. I was thinking about like how important that book was to me and what if I had never come across it. And Michael reads like a book a week or maybe more at this rate. Um, I wanted to ask what, what, what you thought about this concept of like you have to read the right things early in your career so you don't get led astray. Or maybe being led astray early in your career is actually a good thing. So one If of the, you find your way back. Yeah. One of the first things that I read was uh, Market Wizards. And I think everybody who reads Jack Schwake, shout out to Jack Schwake. Yeah, everybody, everybody who reads that book probably thinks that they're going to become the next Stanley Druckenmiller. Because how, how could you not? Yeah. You underline the shit out of it. You're so inspired. They make it sound so simple. And then you got it in trade and you're like, oh, wait a minute. You know what's so great about that book, Market Wizards, though? The format is basically him doing these interviews and then he edits them so that there's so much, like every paragraph seems like it's another pearl of wisdom. Yeah. He probably speaks to these guys though for eight hours. So it was, that. it was like a podcast in book form like yeah, yeah, yeah. 30 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he interviews like the best hedge fund managers on the planet early in their careers. And that's why the book is a classic. And yeah, it was great. Updates. It was terrific. Right, um, but it does, it does, as an investor, it's more, you're saying like, it's more interesting than it is a manual. Well, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't really think that any books can necessarily teach you how to be a good investor. Do you agree with that or you no, disagree? No, I think that's the opposite of what I think. You don't think any books can teach you how to... Okay, look, wait, let me, let me clarify. I don't think any books can change your temperament or your disposition and your emotional proclivities. I don't think a book will change, um, but I think a book will instruct you on big mistakes that other people have made, things not to do, maybe refocus you on the whole purpose of investing. That's what Nick's book did for so, me. So, okay, fair. My point is that like you have to figure it out on your own. So That's you true. could take things from certain books and ideas, but nobody is going to tell you how it feels to lose money or what the perfect asset allocation is or anything like that. That's, oh, that's, that's true. You have to live through it. I agree. But now what if now what if you read a, a really important book but too early before you've gone through all that experience? So maybe I had to – like I came across this book 10 years into my career. Maybe that's the way it should have been. And if I had read it in 1999 yeah, or 2000, it might not have resonated. So one of the first books that I read – so I read um, – I read The Intelligent Investor. I think that was like my first dive into the market, like everybody else's. What, Ben Graham, yeah. annotated by Jason Zweig? Yes. Okay. And the Mr. Market was like a light bulb, like it is for everybody else. You're like, oh my God, this is this is so terrific and clever. And oh, that's how it actually how, works. How Mr. Market's job is to frustrate the most amount of people. That it's all, that it's all psychology and it's not all about you know calculation. Um, when did he write that? Was that in the 30s? It was 19, it was 90, uh, I think it was 39. I don't know. Maybe okay. I'm wrong. All right. Uh, and early on, I also read uh, Jack Bogle's little book of common sense investing. And okay. it made sense how Warren Buffett is going to put 90% of his money in, in index funds when he dies. Right. But it's like nobody wants to open up a, a brokerage account and buy index funds. It's boring. Yeah. So maybe that's the sort of book that um, it's good if you read early on because you sort of get a flavor. But then you're like, ah, but no, I'm not going to do that. Right. And, then, and then you come back to it later on. Right. Maybe. So 
so so this is the book that when people are like, oh, I just look, I, I go to conferences all over the country, all over the world. I meet like young advisors, and one of the first questions I always get is like, what should I read? And I think they're talking about like who should I follow on social media or what blogs. So, but I, I try to like inject books into the conversation and you could give people a list of 10 books. They're not going to read them all. So if you have to give them one, this is, this is the one. What do you tell young people in, in just advisors? What do you tell them they should be reading? Like, do you give them a book recommendation? Mm, well, the intelligence investment is 1949. No, that's important. That's what but... you tell them? No, no, no. I was just correcting myself. Oh, okay. Um, if like one book, I don't know. That's kind of hard. Okay. What do you know. tell it? What do you tell investors they, sh- they like? I don't, I don't like, like, I don't, that's not my thing. I don't like giving people advice because it's not advice, but you read, a, you've read like a thousand books. Yeah, but you it's like, but, but, but it's say. so personal. Some people love market wizards and, that's, and and they're just trading and that's it. Right. And other people, you know, uh, uh, the random walk down Wall Street will resonate with certain people. So, oh, it's hard to know like what book will make an impact. Yeah. Like you everyone. could recommend a random walk and somebody's like, that was garbage. Like, why would I read that bullshit? So maybe the, maybe the right thing is a list and then just hope that people pick the right. Well, one I would say like, well, list. well, what are you into? Like, <laughs> no, seriously. Like, like, like what, are you, what are you into? <laughs> <laughs> what are you into? Like, what's, what's your whole deal? Yeah. Um, do you think that, do you think that there are books that you have not gotten to that might have been really helpful for you if you had, like, do you, do you worry about it? Cause in everything that you're reading, it seems like you're getting through a lot. You're definitely reading way more than I am, obviously. Um, do you feel like maybe you're you're not reading the right stuff or you're reading things that are coloring your opinion the way they shouldn't? Or is life too short to really worry about that? Nah, I don't think that. So here's the analogy I get for like reading. I think that uh, once you start reading, you become more interested in reading because you realize how big the world is and how little you know. So it's sort of like when you turn on an iPhone and you press your thumbprint in and it just fills in and fills in and fills in and fills in and all the gaps keep getting filled in. That's like how I feel like with reading like history and stuff oh, like I that. that. I, know, um, I know exactly what you mean. But it's take it takes a long, long, long time to get there. So it's I feel like reading is sort of like going to the gym. Like it's, it feels like it's pain in the ass and it's work and it's a chore. But once you get into the routine and the groove, it becomes sort of uh, second nature. You know, the other thing about that, just to wrap up, is like um, if you don't do it all the time, uh, like like it compounds on itself, like getting things out of books. If you like just pick up a book once a year, you're not really going to get as much out of it as if you were just generally in the habit of reading. And then I think you won't feel as bad when you finish a book and three weeks later you can't remember most of what you read. Like if you're just regularly reading and digesting, that's okay. That's okay. That happens to me all the time. Yeah, and it's fine. just but it's like the same thing with with movies and TV. You watch it for entertainment. I mean, I'm not reading because I feel like I'm taking a quiz the next week. I do because I enjoy it. Are you still highlighting and underlying shit, or are you just like enjoying the book and putting it down? Uh, no, I'm I'm like I don't write in it. I just like mark it up. Uh, so I'll like maybe put a star on the top of a page, so that when I flip through the book, I remember. Oh yeah, I wanted to go back to this. But beyond that, I've never written I wanna, like. I just want to enjoy it. Yeah, I've never like written like, oh my god, this reminds me of the time. Well, I so I read some of books that you had been through years ago, and you were like highlighting, underlining, circling stuff, and I was just like, man, I'm jealous that this guy's like reading in such a disciplined way. I just never. I don't know. I guess I enjoy the book more if I just read through it. I don't know if there's a right or wrong. All right, let us know what you think. What are the right books for financial advisors and or investors to read early in their career, in the middle part of their career? Um, Let us know your thoughts in general about reading, digesting, retaining information. We love your feedback, and we will talk to you soon.